go. How do you do? It's Mr. Moo. I've been working on Stolen Hearts for almost four years now, and I've designed over 100 levels for it. In each level, you avoid obstacles and enemies, solve puzzles, and ultimately reach the heart at the end. But I'm still missing some boss levels to break up the gameplay and introduce some special challenges. Between the first time that I opened this project and now, I've made a bunch of smaller games for game jams and just to make things I was interested in. And I've been really interested in doing more 3D work. But Stolen Hearts is a 2D pixel art game and always has been. Well, not anymore. I'm making 3D bosses for my 2D game. Because I think having a 3D boss in a 2D world is much better than having a 2D boss in a 3D world. Hey, Mr. Flats? Yeah, I have that report you were looking for? No, wrong, wrong. You're going to have to redo it. But why? It lacks depth. I've decided that Stolen Hearts will have five bosses. One for each of the playable characters, and then a final boss for them all to take on at the end. And I've created three out of five bosses so far. The Good Knight's Big Bad Wolf, the Twin Shadow Man, and the primary antagonist of Stolen Hearts, Dango. I started with the only one that actually had any 2D representation before this, which was the wolf. I had created this version of the wolf over a year ago, and so I had an idea of what I wanted the level to be like. I started with trying to model a realistic-ish wolf shape, using front and side perspectives, but there was something a little off about it. So I started looking at other classic villains that I may want to use as inspiration. And I've always drawn a lot of inspiration from Nintendo games. And in my heart, I've always wanted this game to have a similar vibe in terms of aesthetic to some of the classic Super Mario games. So there's no better candidate for reference than Bowser. Unlike my initial attempt to model a complex wolf shape, Bowser is made up of a bunch of simple shapes. It would be strange if Mario looked like this and then Bowser looked like a real dinosaur. <laughs> I think in my case, I can also go with something on the simpler side that will complement the simplicity of the pixel art. But also, I'm not talented enough to do better than that. This is what I came up with, and he slashes and bites at you as you try to make your way through the level. The Shadow Man is a very different type of boss than the Wolf. I modeled the generic man shape and added this shadowy smoke that emits from his skin using VFX graphs. Unlike the Wolf who tries to attack you, the Shadow Man tries to avoid you. The twins, who have a special ability of being able to split, have the goal of trying to trap the Shadow Man, leading him towards the light. It's much more puzzly than the Wolf level, and I nailed down a base mechanic, but it's still missing a little something, so I'll probably have to circle back to this one. Most recently, I've been working on Dango, the big baddie himself, the final boss. There's still plenty of work to be done for his level as well, especially the lighting and 2D elements, but I'm feeling pretty good about the direction it's heading in. He has the most complicated model, including a facial rig to help him expose those shiny teeth and maybe also blow fire. I've already spoiled so much today that I have to keep some things a secret, right? So if you want to know, then you got a wishlist stolen hearts on Steam. So you'll know when the game is released sometime this decade, I hope. But combining 2D and 3D art can sometimes be challenging. How to combine 2D and 3D art. Step one, make your 2D art. Step two, Make your 3D art. Remember to get your proportions just right. But also it's art, so there are no wrong answers. But you also don't want to embarrass yourself. Looking good. Almost there. Step 3. Lay your creation flat on your hand. Now squash it against the page. Perfect. Looking good. Step 4. Tape it to the page. Step 5. Last step. Close that book forever and ever. From my understanding, Unity 2D and Unity 3D are basically the same thing. Unity doesn't differentiate between those two types of projects. It does use different components, but there's no reason in my mind that I couldn't just add 3D elements and everything would just work perfectly. So I imported my 3D models and everything worked perfectly. Not. Here are some technical issues I ran into with 2D and 3D integration. First, my project uses URP's 2D lights, and the camera in my scenes uses a 2D renderer that doesn't work with 3D lights. 
so my 3D assets look like big blobs of paint without any depth or shadow. Nor can you overlay two cameras that have incompatible renderers. I try to hack with black layers of 2D sprites with very low opacity. So the further away the part of the mesh is, the more layers are in the way, making it darker. But it looked kinda weird. Eventually I came up with a solution that involved using a render texture to output the 2D elements and a 3D camera to render the 3D elements and the 2D render texture being displayed on a plane. Another issue was the use of colliders. 2D and 3D colliders use different physics systems. I tried to come up with different solutions to generate 2D colliders from the outline of a mesh, but nothing worked very well or it wasn't very efficient, causing the game to lag. So eventually my solution was to animate a bunch of 2D colliders so that they match the animations of the 3D mesh, which was extremely time consuming, but got the job done in the end. One more thing! Longtime friend of the channel, The Shelf Man, has just had his first commercial release on Steam. Dance Assembly is a fun game about creating new characters to dance along to the music. It's easy going and a good time. Sometimes getting people to care about your content is like pulling teeth. I know I can always rely on The Shelf Man to support me and the things that I make. So go show him some love and pick up Dance Assembly on Steam. Jordy, congrats on your release and all your channel growth this year. Link in the description. While it's been a long and complicated journey to get to this point, I'm quite pleased with the effect that these 3D bosses have on the game. I feel like Stolen Hearts has more of a hook now, separating it from other puzzle platformers. You can wishlist Stolen Hearts on Steam right now, on its very out of date Steam page. If this game seems interesting to you, you can subscribe to the channel for more updates. If you liked the video, then like the video! In any case, I'll see you next time. Peace!